Hello there, my fellow wizards, and welcome back to our series of lore on Warhammer Fantasy's Colleges of Magic. Today we're gonna be tackling that one particular order of magic that most of you were probably looking forward to. At the same time, thanks to a few video games, this is the order that is probably the most well known even by those who are not fans of Warhammer. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Bright College. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us blow something up, shall we? The Pyromancers of the Bright Order are the students of the Lore of Fire, wielding Akshi, the Red Wind of Magic. Akshi is represented via the Key of Secrets, which symbolizes the unlocking of power via knowledge. Indeed, progression through the eight ranks of the Bright College is marked at every transition by the aspirant's passage through a filigreed gate, each one larger and more imposing than the last one. The Key of Secrets is central to every tradition and ritual performed by the Bright Wizards, and is used as the badge of rank by many of the Magisters. The more keys a wizard carries, and the heavier the chains with which they are bound, the greater his power and the higher his standing in the Order. That is not to say that the Key of Secrets is a purely figurative symbol of power. Bright wizards commonly joke that just as their knowledge is the key to power, that power grants them the key to any door. After all, there is very few gates capable of withstanding the fury of an angry bright wizard. The pyromancers of the Bright Order tend to wear robes of red and orange, as a kind of uniform in battle, cut as to allow easy movement in combat. They are often ruddy of skin. The more the pyromancer uses Akshi and his mastery over it grows, the more the red wind will affect him physically. The senior pyromancers tend to have coppery or even red hair, which, along with their eyebrows and beards, seem to turn to flame as they cast their magic. They also bear red tattoos across their faces and arms. These are said to writhe and change as the bearer manipulates the red wind into magic. Adorning their belts, all the pyromancers have a set of keys, each of a different metal. These are the Keys of Secrets, which I described a minute ago. The so-called Pyromantic Thaumaturgy is the least subtle of all the laws of magic and its effects. It involves the manipulation of heat and fire in every shape. For this reason, the Magisters of this order are often referred to as Pyromancers, as they can control any kind of flame, natural or otherwise. As such, the magic of the Bright Order tends to be the most spectacular and impressive, and literally explosive, at least in the eyes of the ordinary people of the Empire. While many pyromancers go on to become battle wizards, having the talents and knowledge to lend considerable assistance on a battlefield, Bright Wizards do more than simply fight. During peacetime, they are often employed as guardians for nobility, for diplomats and wealthy merchants who are always passing through very dangerous parts of the Empire. Pyromancers frequently train with military detachments, and, as such, they are the most readily recognized of all kinds of magisters. But they don't simply learn how to use their abilities to support their troops as many other magisters do. They also learn how to physically fight as frontline soldiers, such is their aggressive and passionate nature. Bright wizards are often at the front line of the battle, defending the Empire from the forces of chaos and many other threats with their fiery and destructive energy. Thus, some people consider these wizards to be actual heroes of the Empire. However, the powers of the pyromancers can also be terrifying. Natural fires are bad enough, but people who can create fire out of nothing, that is dangerous. Plus, out of all the winds of magic, the nature of Akshi is the most tempestuous and so are the men and women who can sense its power. Thus, many people are right to fear the Bright Wizards. The Bright College itself is set within a substantial area of burnt-out ruins in Aldorf's lower class East End. The cause of this fire is one of the greatest gossiped-about mysteries of Aldorf. Some blame a cataclysmically faulty enchantment attempted by the College. Others blame the destruction on a heretical cult or another, while others still claim the destruction is the result of the counter-strike of the college's defensive enchantments against an outside attack. 
The story that any particular individual believes tells a great deal about that person's attitude towards the Magisters in general. Whatever the cause, this cataclysm devastated many buildings, and is said to have left their charred shells haunted. People traveling through the area are said to catch glimpses of figures from the corners of their eyes, but nothing can be found on further investigation. A few footprints might be found in the ash, starting nowhere and leading nowhere. Although the fire was many years ago, visitors to the area can still find smoldering beams and door frames, as if the fire was only put out hours ago. A few brave enough people to pick through the ruins claim to have seen the entire area burst in flames around them, sending them back in time to the disaster itself. A number of investigations have failed to reveal a cause for the phenomena, although some people suspect that the bright magisters themselves are responsible, seeking to preserve their intimacy. The truth of the matter, though, remains unknown. Somewhat understandably, the citizens of Altdorf have refused to move back into the area, and thus it still remains uninhabited, even in a city as big and crowded as Altdorf. A decree was made that the blackened area around the college must be left as a warning against magical arrogance. The college itself is invisible behind a magic barrier. Its location appears to be a collection of charred and largely collapsed towers around a burned-out plaza. On some particularly hot days at the height of summer, a vision of the college sometimes appears in the heat haze above the place. The locals take the opportunity to tell gullible visitors that the Bright Order actually flies around the world, taking the magisters to their battles. In fact, the college is firmly grounded, and anyone managing to find their way through the magical barrier will see just as much. Behind the barrier, the air is filled with the smell of smoke and myriad scents of burning, of wood, of coal, of cloth, of molten metal, and even hints of charred flesh. During the night, the college is lit by a flickering orange and red glare from giant fires, which burn endlessly atop each of its 21 mighty towers, and by a central bright beacon. Visitors finding a way through the magical barrier will always find themselves standing in front of the gates, no matter what direction they approach the college from. These great bronze gates, three times the height of a man, glow red from intense heat, and even approaching them takes a lot of mental fortitude, although they do no actual damage. On the other hand, touching the gates with your bare hands will cause burns. The gatekeeper occupies a small building next to the main gate, and opens them for anyone who can demonstrate they have actual business inside. The pyromancers, obviously, always have a legitimate reason to enter their own college, while the other people must have some business with someone already inside. If guests have been invited for a specific time, the magister who invited them will have told the gatekeeper in advance, and so he will be ready for them. Famous or high-ranking individuals would be allowed in for almost any reason. The gatekeeper will hardly keep the Reichsmarshal or Karl Franz himself waiting, but dignitaries like these will never come unannounced. Within the gates, the imposing redstone buildings of the college are ranged around a heptagonal paved courtyard. There is a tower at each corner, and two further towers divide each range into thirds. In the center of each range is a door leading into the college proper, or, in the case of the main gates, out of the college. The doors are all made of metal, and all of them have seven keyholes, although they are almost never locked. The colored stones of the paving form a pattern of seven keys, one pointing at each of the doors. The interiors of the college buildings are entirely made of stone. Even the floors and the ceilings are rock, and stone and metal furniture is commonplace. There are very few windows, and those that are there serve more as outlets for smoke than anything else. The personal quarters of the magisters have a wider range of decoration, and those on the inner side of the range have glazed windows overlooking the courtyard. However, illumination by open flames is universal. Candles are rare, and enclosed lanterns unheard of. The number of fires around means that the inside of the college strikes many people as incredibly hot, although the bright magisters themselves always find it comfortable, increasingly so as they grow in power. 
The Bright Order is a bad place for a fight unless the attackers are very powerful. If anyone hostile is actually detected inside, dozens of Bright Magisters will come and destroy them. Sneaking into the college would also require great skill or magical assistance. The walls are very high, and most of the gods are well concealed. It might be easier to set up a proper meeting with a Bright Magister and then not leave. Once inside the college, many will assume the strangers have a reason to be there, unless they are doing something especially shady, like sneaking around or trying to pick a lock. With confidence and care, some clever interlopers could get almost anywhere, but the consequences of getting caught will likely turn them into cinders. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Bright College and its pyromancers for today. As I've already done with previous Colleges of Magic, this mini-series will also consist of two episodes. The one from today and another video where I'm gonna talk about their apprentices and a few famous wizards. Are you a fan of the Bright College and its members? What do you like or dislike most about them? Would you like to be a bright wizard? Do share your thoughts and opinions on the matter in the comments below as always. Was the video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. May Sigmar's blessings be upon you.